Hello, my friend. Today, I wanted to focus on one particular brand of eyeshadow, and that is Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's a very, very popular eyeshadow formula, but they are quite pricey at around $40 to $45 for each palette. So it's really important before you invest that much in an eyeshadow palette to know which one would be best for you. So if that sounds interesting to you, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. Before we get started, I do want to let you know that this video is not sponsored and I purchased all of these products myself. I am not on ABH PR, but I have noticed that a lot of the comments down in my comment section and when I have com conversations with people on Twitter, a lot of it is about people being excited about the new Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow releases because they are very, very popular. So I figured I would make a video just kind of talking about the differences and similarities between the currently available palettes as well as past palettes. So let me just start off by showing you my collection. So I have the holiday release for this year, which is the Sultry palette. I also have Norvina, which uh, came out recently. These two, according to Anastasia Beverly Hills, I did email them. These two are considered limited edition. These two are part of their permanent line, Modern Renaissance and Soft Glam. I also have some other palettes that um, I think that these were are limited edition as well. I don't believe these are part of their permanent line. I have Subculture. I also have Prism, and then I have the beloved Long Gone Master Palette by Mario. So let's talk about price first. So I noticed that all of the Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes for a very long time have been $42, but the new release, Sultry, is $45. When I asked the people over at ABH through their customer service link, I asked them about the price difference and whether the price was going up on the eyeshadow palettes. They kind of dodged my question. I'll put their answer up on the, <laughs> on the screen right now. Uh, they didn't really answer me. They just said, basically, you'll find the prices on the website. That's all they would tell me. So I don't know if their prices are going up to $45 or if they're gonna go back to 42. I don't know. I would imagine they're going up to 45, but I don't know. I don't know, but I figured I would mention that. Now with the packaging, Anastasia for a long time has been doing this velvet packaging. And let me show you why this might be a problem. Let's look at Prism for as an example. So if you look very closely on this, you'll be able to see a lot of dirt that has adhered to this. Little uh, dust particles, pieces of little bits of shadow, things like that. It's just very, very uh, clingy to substances that may be around in the air and whatnot. Also, if you look at my soft glam. I've got this beautiful streak of green <laughs> on the on the velvet here. The modern renaissance definitely has seen better days. Norvina so far looks pretty good. I think that she's uh, definitely the one that's holding up the best so far, but I haven't had it for very long either. So just keep that in mind if that bothers you, like the, the outside packaging of the palette that it can't get dirty very easily, you probably, this, it's probably going to annoy you. Now the Sultry palette does have glitter on the outside. It is a little bit different, uh, but I have heard from friends of mine that this glitter does come off on them. I I haven't personally had a problem with it, but uh, some for some people this glitter is falling off. Um, but for me, I haven't had an issue. If you're curious about a full review of these, I do have full, very, very in-depth reviews of the Prism palette, the Subculture palette, Modern Renaissance, I think I compared that to another palette, but there's still a lot of good information on there. And then the Sultry palette. I don't have full reviews of Norvina or Soft Glam. But when I did do my Sultry review, I did give you kind of a glimpse at the formula comparisons between a lot of these palettes, but I do want to go a little more in depth because that is what this particular video is about. So we're going to go ahead and cut to that so I can show you just a little bit more about formula comparisons and what that might mean for your purchase. Alrighty, ready to get geeky. Before we get geeky, let's go ahead and talk about potential allergens. So the first one that some people stay away from is talc. I have no problem with talc. I know a lot of people don't have problems with talc, but some people do. Just know that talc is the number one ingredient in the subculture and prism palette. It is not included in any of the other ABH formulas that I own. Some people have problems with dimethicone in their skin. There is dimethicone in all of these products. From what I've seen, people that have problems with 
dimethicone are people that have problems with it in like complexion products like foundations and concealers and things. I don't see as much of a problem in people, you know, complaining in my comment section and from research in powder products like eyeshadow. But just so you know, dimethicone is in all of them. Phenoxyethanol is the preservative in all of these eyeshadow palettes except for Subculture and Prism. I know some people are sensitive to that preservative. Tocopherol is a form of vitamin E that some people are sensitive to. It's in all of these eyeshadow palettes except for Subculture and Prism. Now let's go ahead and get into the pigments that are used. Carmine is used in all of these eyeshadow palettes. Carmine is a red pigment that is used from crushed bugs. Some people find that gross, especially people that are vegan. So if you are vegan, these eyeshadow palettes are not going to be for you. They all contain carmine. Now, all of the eyeshadow pigments that are in these palettes are FDA approved for use on the eyes. Some of them, however, are not FDA approved used for the lips. I know some people like to tap eyeshadows onto their lips for a fun effect. So ultramarines and ferric ferrocyanide are the two pigments that are not lip safe that are in these eyeshadow palettes. You can figure out which specific eyeshadow shades from which palettes, either on the Anastasia Beverly Hills website looking at the ingredient list or on the box. Another potential allergen for some people is cocoa seed butter. So that ingredient is in sultry, Norvina, and soft glam if you are sensitive to that. Another not vegan ingredient is beeswax. Some people also don't use beeswax for environmental reasons. So sultry, Norvina, and soft glam all have beeswax. One more pigment that I forgot to mention is bismuth oxychloride. That is an ingredient that causes irritation in some people. It is a kind of a scratchy ingredient. It's in just a couple of shades. So Bloom from the Sultry palette and then Base, Volatile, and Passion from the Norvina palette. Those are the ones with bismuth oxychloride. So if you find that your eyes are itchy, that you're having some kind of redness, it might be from the bismuth oxychloride. So those are the shades that contain that. And the last one I wanted to mention is Red 40. There's a big confusion right now and people are saying that Red 40 is not approved by the FDA for eye use. That is not true. Red 40 is approved for eye use. It's approved for lip use in all cosmetics. But Red 40 is an allergen for some people, so you will find Red 40 just in one shade, and that's the shade Dazzling from the Norvina palette. The primary red pigment that they use in the Anastasia Beverly Hills formulas is Carmine. Now let's go ahead and look at these fun charts that I made for you that I showed you if you saw the Sultry palette review. Figured I would bring them back for this and kind of go into a little more in depth. So one thing I wanna show right away is the first one that I did because I did create these for the Sultry palette review and you'll see the way that I organized this. The ingredients are listed in order from the most concentrated down to the least concentrated. That's the way the FDA requires companies to list ingredients all the way up to when they are more than 1% of the product. If they're less than 1% of the product, they can be listed in any order. So this is not a foolproof system. We don't know where that 1% line is. So you kind of have to take this with a grain of salt. So you'll see I've color coded them. Green are the first five ingredients. Yellow are the next five ingredients and then orange and then a pink and then a blue. It was just the way that I was organizing them for my own brain. Hopefully it makes sense to you as well. So the first line in the sultry palette is the matte shades that are in that palette. So this will kind of give you an at a glance at the different formulas. If you look at the sultry formula, you'll see that there's two different distinct formulas. There's the matte formula and the shimmer formula. Of of course. But when you compare that those ingredients in the same order to other palettes, if you look at the Modern Renaissance palette, that one has a very similar formula throughout the palette as the matte shades in the Sultry palette. If you look at the matte shades in the Norvina palette, you'll also see that those are in a similar order. Soft Glam has kind of the same thing going on as Modern Renaissance is in that they are very similar formulas except for the shades Sultry and Bronze and the big reason for that is they use something called synthetic florflogopite in those. And it's really just synthetic mica. And those are the number one ingredients in those two shades. So really what that's doing is it's creating extra pops of shine, extra chunky glitter situations going on in there. So it doesn't mean anything good or bad. It's just different. So what's the big takeaway from that? The big takeaway is that the matte shades in those four palettes, Sultry, Soft Glam, Norvina, and Modern Renaissance are all very very similar. Also, the shimmer shades in the Soft Glam and Modern Renaissance palettes don't have that much of a difference, except for those couple in the, so the Soft Glam 
palette. Another comparison we can draw is the shimmer formulas that are in the Sultry palette and the Norvina palette. Those also have a lot of similarities. So if you like these shimmers in either the Norvina or the Sultry, you're going to like probably the other ones as well. Finally, I just want to show you the graphs for Subculture and Prism. You'll notice that there are way fewer ingredients in those two eyeshadow palettes than all of the other eyeshadow palettes. They were a completely different formula, completely different animal than the rest of the Anastasia Beverly Hills line. So if you had problems with Subculture and Prism, or if you particularly liked Subculture and Prism, just know that the other Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes are a completely different formula than those two. Those two were released last holiday season and there was kind of a negative reaction. So I think that they've kind of gone back and improved and changed things for this holiday season. And you see that in the similarities between Sultry and Norvina. So that's it for the geeky part and the ingredient part. Let's go ahead and get into some swatches. I hope that you found that interesting and helpful. I know a lot of us like to geek out on, in, on ingredients together, so that's always fun for me to go into that with you. So now we're gonna go into the color story and the swatches. So let's go ahead and get close up so I can show you all of that. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with Modern Renaissance, the uh, big sister of the collection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swatch these from light to dark so that you can kind of see the color story of it a little bit better. So as you can see, we've got mostly browns and reds. We've also got oranges. We've got this purpley kind of shade here. We've got a brown down here. Uh, so we're going with very warm here, but we've got touches of things that'll cool it off, such as this shade here, this shade here. But overall, we've got a very warm looking palette. We've also got some patchiness in a couple of the swatches, but overall, very, very creamy and easier to work with. If you're new to my channel, you're new to the wipe test. And what I like to do is I like to take my towel here and wipe down my arm to see whether the pigments will stay or not. To me, that's a hint of lasting power. My subscribers have told me that that works for them as well. So let's go ahead and swipe down and see what happens with this palette. I'm trying not to go back and forth because I don't want the dark shades to mix with the lighter shades if I can help it. So you can see that the lighter shades are pretty much gone, but from this shade all the way down, we've got some intense pigmentation that is really staining the skin. And I have had a great time with the lasting power of this palette. It has been fantastic overall. All right, let's go into a soft glam. Let's put those side by side. This one is the Modern Renaissance. This is the soft glam. So you'll see there is a difference between the two. This one's gonna give you more red tones where this one's gonna give you more pinks. It's, this is softer and this is louder. <laughs> it's when it comes down to it. But you'll see some of the same shades such as Cypress Umber is in both palettes. Tempera is in both palettes. Burnt Orange is in both palettes. There are definitely similarities but they are different and I'll show you them the side-by-side -side swatches in just a minute. Thank you. 
So you see this one definitely has more of an antique kind of look to it, more gold to like a mauve rather than a red berry. You've also got a lot of depth going on in these deeper shades down here to give you a real smoky look if you want or lighten it up over here with these. All right, let's go ahead and wipe down, see what we got. I feel like these are definitely not staining as much as the modern Renaissance, but they definitely have some staining going on, especially in those deeper shades, which is typical for all eyeshadow palettes. All right, this is the baby of Norvina, who is the CEO of Anastasia Beverly Hills. Looking at this palette as a whole, you can really see how unique it is. This purple shade here, I don't own anything like that. It is so unique. In the pan, it definitely looks like a lavender, but on the skin, it definitely leans more blue. Also, this shade right here is got this really cool, like just pink shine to it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's just got such a nice, traditionally feminine kind of feel to me. Uh, this shade rose gold too is absolutely incredible definitely a very different color story than we have with the other palettes all right ladies it's time to go here we go let's see what happens all right so it looks kind of like the soft glam when you wipe it away in that you definitely have some staining but it's definitely not as intense as the modern Renaissance it's very similar to soft glam in that way and finally we have the sultry palette So you can see this one is definitely the most cool toned of the bunch. Watch what happens when I just cover up that one bright shade. It really does look quite boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's cool toned. It's, it doesn't have anything exciting and then you go bam and it just totally sets off the entire palette. But what I will say about this is these shimmers are just as awesome as the shimmers in the other eyeshadow palettes. So it's really looking at this color story and thinking whether without this guy, whether this would excite you. Uh, this is a great, like, neutrally looking, on the go to work or school, not trying to stand out kind of palette. It's very calm overall, if you don't count the shininess of the foiled shades. And then this is your play fun shade there. So now let's wipe these babies off. And these are definitely staining more than the other shades that we've looked at. Uh, there's definitely a stronger staining in the lighter shades than we've seen since we swatched the Modern Renaissance palette. Okay, so this is actually a different day. I had in the original shoot for this video, I had swatched a lot of the duplicate shades next to each other. So for example, like fresh, base, tempera, tempera here, they're all kind of the same, you know? And I had spent a lot of time filming and editing it, and then I realized as I was editing it that it wasn't as helpful as I wanted it to be. So we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna just lay two palettes next to each other and swatch the shades within each palette that are similar. So if you own one, you can decide whether maybe you want another one, or if you're trying to decide between two, maybe one shade 
calls to you a little bit more than another. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. I'm actually going to skip subculture and prism for this because the formulas are so different, the color schemes are so different than the rest of the line that there really isn't a lot of similarity. Just know that if you own the subculture or the prism palettes, there really are not very many similarities with the rest of the line. So top here is the Modern Renaissance, bottom is the Sultry palette. So what I did was I looked at shades that looked similar between the two and then just swatched those next to each other. So those are the similar shades between those palettes. So if you have Modern Renaissance, just know you do have some similar shades in Sultry and vice versa. I was actually quite surprised at how some of these look when you put them next to each other. But keep in mind, there are some dupe shades in here that are the exact same shade. Tempera, uh, Burnt Orange, and Cypress Umber are the exact same shade. So that takes three shades out right off the bat. They're exactly the same. I'm actually like, I'm kind of surprised even after doing the rest of this video, just watching these next to each other, I mean, they are really similar. I put these next to each other. This is a matte and this is a shimmer. Glistening is kind of a shimmery version of Golden Ochre from the Modern Renaissance palette. So I still stand by that I like Soft Glam better, but man, these are pretty stinking close, aren't they? Now the Master Palette by Mario has been long since discontinued, but I always hear people talking about how they wish that they had bought the Master Palette by Mario. So I figured we would do a little comparison here with these. And that's what we've got there. We definitely have some similarities in some of those shades. And if you think about it in perspective, that's half the palette, pretty much the same. All right, so now we're gonna look at the similarities between the Modern Renaissance and Norvina. So there's more than I thought. Uh, these these two here and these two here really aren't dupes, but they might be able to use be used for similar purposes. Um, definitely more than I thought, but at the same time, they are quite different palettes. Since Soft Glam is their other permanent palette, we're gonna go ahead and compare that to the others as well. Here's some comparison shades there. So top row is going to be Soft Glam, bottom row is the Sultry palette. So we're thinking 14 shades out of the whole palette and we've got one, two, three, four. These are exact dupes, they're both called Noir. So, I mean, you're still getting quite a few unique shades between the two. It's so funny how when you <laughs> reorder them, how things change just so much. So again, Soft Glam on the top, we're gonna do Norvina on the bottom. And here are some similar shades. Uh, you can see these two really aren't dupes. This one uh, from the Wild Child shade from Norvina is definitely more of a topper shade, but I wanted you to see them next to each other just so you could get an idea. Um, there are definite differences. I mean, like this one down here, this one is Summer from Norvina. That is so much more intense than Glistening from Soft Glam. Soft Glam is a lot softer. Uh, and also this one is uh, Volatile from uh, Norvina, and this one is is the Dusty Rose shade. You can see Volatile is definitely much more gray toned. I also swatched Volatile next to Cy Cypress Umber. Uh, those are actually a lot closer. But yeah, I mean, on the eye, a lot of these may look similar. They're definitely not the same, but there's definitely similarities. And just for fun, let's compare the Soft Glam to the Master Palette by Mario. Not a whole lot of dupes there, but in case you own the Master Palette by Mario, you can kind of see some of the shades there. They're kind of similar, sorta, kinda, kinda sorta. And one last comparison, just comparing the two limited edition palettes that just came out, the Sultry palette and the Norvina palette. One thing that's really interesting that I want you to note now is that Volatile and Dystopian, look how different they look in the pan. But then when you put them next to each other in the swatch, this is Dystopian and then this is Volatile. They look very similar, very, very similar. And overall, there are quite a few similar shades as well in those two palettes. Definitely different, but similar. So that is it for the swatch portion of this video. And I hope that you found it helpful. And let's go ahead and go into the next part.
I know people are going to be wondering what my personal favorites are. I mean, we're all different, we're all unique, we all have our own personal things we like about different palettes, but I do want to kind of throw my opinion in there along with all of this objective stuff. Let's get a little subjective for a minute. My favorite palettes that I own by Anastasia are Soft Glam and Norvina, and those are some of my most recent purchases, and I'll tell you why. With Norvina, it's a lot of the color story within it. To me, it's just a very feminine color story uh, with the typical colors that are associated associated with feminine. We've got pinks and purples and things like that. And I love the way the looks come out with these shadows in that they're different than other looks that I've come up with in the past. My big complaint about this one is the softness of the foiled shade. You'll see this rose gold shade is just turning into a hot mess because it's just very, very soft. You have to be very delicate with the foiled shades in this palette, but it's just a really fun palette to play with and enjoy. And I just really love the looks that I come up with using these colors. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. I also really love Soft Glam. Now, like we talked about, Soft Glam does have a lot in common with the modern Renaissance as far as the shades. Some of them are the exact same shades, but I personally prefer the color story in this one more. It just feels more homey and warm uh, and, and just, it feels very comforting to me. And I know that's kind of weird that I'm putting it on my eyes and I'm saying that it's comforting, but it is. Uh, with modern Renaissance, I see this more as a little more bold, a little more uh, standing out. You know, something that might not blend as well in in like a typical work look for the daytime. Uh, you, of course, you can get some good work looks, but when you when you get into these reds here, I feel like it gets a lot more bold and energetic. Where I feel like the soft glam is just that. It's just soft. You know, it gives that comforting, warm feeling. So I find these two personally, for me, to be the most fun to play with. So that's it for this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you enjoy all of my in-depth information and getting geeky with me, definitely make sure you hit the subscribe button before you go. I love hanging out with you talking about it. But now it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and help each other to buy things that are totally worth it. It's your turn to comment down below if you've tried any of these eyeshadow palettes in the past or currently. If you're trying them and loving them, definitely leave your thoughts down below which ones are your favorite, but most importantly, why are they your favorites? What is it about them that you love? If it's a specific color story that you enjoy, what color eyes do you have? What skin tone do you have? Are you warm tone, cool tone? Give us some information so that when people are reading your comments down below, they can say, oh, that's like me. I have those color eyes. I am that skin tone. This may work better for me. So the more information you can leave down below, the better so the community can all learn from you as well. Thank you again so much for watching. Mad love to you and I will see you in a video very, very soon.